what is up what is good what is gucci it is your girl petty page back at it again with yet another video for you hoes okay so i wasn't actually going to continue with the trisha pater story from perfectly honest i kind of felt like that story had come to a close and anything else would really just be dragging it on however there has been some significant changes in the trisha pater story at present and i've spent the best part of like an hour and a half searching for some lost audio that i've been able to finally frigging locate of ryland adams actually sounding like an absolute a huge hypocrite in hindsight but we all know that hindsight is 2020 right but before we take a quick walk down memory lane here is a few words from one of my sponsors today's video is proudly sponsored by juvia's place okay so today i actually got the chance to play with the brand new fumi x juvia's place collection which is the disco fever collection in this collection you get a four shade palette which is all like blues and glitters and stuff and let me tell you about the glitters honey i don't know what juvia's place have done since the wahala one and the wahala two palette but their glitter formula has improved significantly i was able to lay all of these glitters down onto my eyelid without even using a glitter adhesive and that really says something because usually with glitters you really need that adhesive girl for it to last all day i highlighted and contoured using the no more nudes palette from dramatic boutique shameless plug snatched the rest of my face with the juvia's place setting powder I absolutely love the way that this look turned out. It's really, really dreamy, and I'm really loving all of these collaborations that Juvia's Place are coming out with. Part of this collection, there is also the Disco Fever Gloss, which is absolutely stunning. It's a see-through clear gloss with some gorgeous little sparkles and reflex in it for a subtle look. And this is the final look. I really, really like it. So if you'd like to purchase this palette or anything from the Juvia's Place collection at all, go to www.juviusplace.com and do not forget to use code PETTY at checkout. That's P-E-T-T-Y at checkout for 10% off your order. And that's also on sale items. You're welcome. Thank you so much to Juvia's Place for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so if you aren't aware of what has been going on up until now, you probably are if you watch all of the drama channels and all of the tea channels, you will know that today there was a brand new episode of The Sip, which is a podcast that Ryland Adams hosts with his co-host Lizzie. Now on the podcast, Ryland Adams addresses the situation with Trisha Paytas. He basically states that he didn't really want to be a hot topic, but he feels as if he has to address the elephant in the room. It was not well received. Here is what Ryland had to say. I guess the first thing we have to address is, and I hate to do this because Trish's friendship means more to me than a, a headlining story on this podcast. I hate that we're a, a podcast that does hot topics and I've somehow become, become a, hot a hot topic that I feel I have to address in some sort of way because I've seen I've been flooded on all all elements of social media regarding this situation and Trish is um, mad at us right now and I guess the only I'm I'm confused I was taken back a little bit and mm -hmm. I understand like she's had drama with Jeffrey and hair by Jay who has Hair by Jay obviously said horrific things that I don't stand by. I don't support. Obviously, I support Trisha over Hair by Jay. Like, I've never followed this man. I don't know this man. I've met him once in passing. Yeah. And the fact that I'm so heavily involved with this really does break my heart because I love Trisha so much. Yeah. I consider her one of my closest friends. We see her more than... I see really anyone besides you because you come over weekly for this podcast. And I guess at the end of the day, I truly wish she would have come to me as a friend if she was hurting like the way that she is mm -hmm. and talked it out with me. And I wish that it wouldn't have played out on the internet like this. I just am really 
honestly confused because I see her all of the time. And even after the last time Jeffrey was physically on this podcast, I was at her house and we had a wonderful, loving time. And I understand maybe it's hard for her to express her actual feelings towards Jeffrey to us or the mm -hmm. gravity in which she's feeling feelings towards Jeffrey when she knows we're specifically friendly with Jeffrey. So maybe it's hard for her to like ask me to cut him off. But at the same time, I just I can't read someone's mind. And I feel like as an adult, I have two other adult friends that got in an altercation a year ago. And maybe it is my fault for never having asked her where she truly stands or wants me to stand. I just, uh, I, I felt as though that was like their lane. I never hung out. I think one time I was with Jeffrey, Shane, Trish, and myself together. Like mm -hmm. they were independently friends and they're both independently my friends. And like, like I said, I see Trish all the time. I love her and I wish she would have just hit me up personally so that, and, so that we could have dealt with this situation. And I feel awful. I feel awful that I contributed to her feeling this way because she's obviously scared and hurting and doesn't want to be in the position she's in. I don't believe Yeah, I have this podcast. And trust me, there's nothing I would rather do than just go about business as normal and have and a handle fun. it privately. Well, and just like, yeah. I don't want to have drama on the internet. Trisha's friendship to me means so much more than the internet yeah and so i i'm just bummed out by it honestly so basically that three minute segment was all that ryland was going to allocate towards the trisha paytas debacle he didn't really have much more to say than that well i don't know what he was expecting but on social media it was not reviewed very well the comment section was open at one point and people were leaving snake emojis people were honestly just not happy with his response and felt like it was extremely dismissive to trisha paytas and her feelings and a lot of people are just basically on trisha paytas's side ryland obviously seeing the negative backlash it was that he received from his response on the podcast then decided to make his last two podcast episodes available but with comments disabled well that didn't stop people people on social media oh no because when the internet is invested in drama they will take it elsewhere so they actually took it to his third video that was available with comments on and they just started flooding it with snake emojis and basically giving their two cents on how they felt on the situation i don't think that that made the situation better i honestly think it made the situation far worse and if they were going to upload the episode they probably should have just uploaded it from the very beginning with comments disabled because a lot of people on the internet just don't like to have their voice stifled. That's what I've learned anyway. From that point on, Trisha Paytas went onto her TikTok and then she left a series of TikTok messages telling her side of the story. And honestly, I could show you them all. I just suggest that you go over to Trisha's TikTok because she'll give you her side of the story because a lot of it is just her repeating herself over and over again. And as much as I understand, obviously she's going through trauma and stuff like that, I'm not going to put you through that torture of having to listen to like 10 minutes minutes worth of TikToks because I love you and we are doing self-care in 2021 okay now for the moment that you guys have all been waiting for I heard a little rumor buzzing around on social media that Ryland Adams had a podcast on the sip where him and Lizzie sat down and spoke about their relationship and how they had fallen out for a number of years in this episode Ryland and Lizzie basically recall a situation that is eerily similar to the situation that Trisha is going through currently with Ryland and Shane to the point that Ryland actually had to cut ties with Lizzie and didn't speak to her for over three years take a look at the segment of this video honestly it shook me to the core when I found it because I was like you of all people should know exactly what Trisha was going through. So take a listen. Uh, well, you were like, do you even have toxic yeah, I relationships? Was like gonna say. And I was like, my only friend breakup ever was with you. But we got back together. We did. Well, I guess, no, I had two friend breakups because I broke up with you over aligning with a friend that I had broken up with. Right. And then you and I didn't talk for like maybe a decade. And then one day. A I decade? No. I don't know. Like three years. Was it three years? Were you hurt? I haven't even been here that long. 
Was I hurt? Yeah, I was hurt. I honestly, I was the one that hit you up afterwards, and I was like, "Hey, I don't like this. I miss you. Can we go hiking?" And then I slowly integrated you back into my life. We started by like you. hiking once a month, and then I was no, like, "No, we started yeah. by hiking once a year." <laughs> But I did miss you. I hate everyone here. Well, I felt that you chose somebody. We were besties and you chose somebody that you didn't really know over me because you guys were like riding together. Well, to be fair, the way that that whole relationship crumbled with you and this third party, Uh we'll call them Max. (laughs) But I didn't know how severely toxic this ex-friend of yours was because it just it seemed kind of petty to me. And I in my mind, I could have both. You know what I mean? Like I could have a private relationship with this man and a private relationship with you. And looking back on it, I now realize that you were so upset, almost in a super protective way. Well, yeah, because, you know, like you knew something that I didn't know. Well, It wasn't just me. He had had been dropped by four or five of my other friends because they had also rubbed them all the wrong way. As yeah, well. I mean, it just took me, you know, getting <laughs> a- abused and used to come to that conclusion myself. But even I think you and I started talking again before I dumped him. Yeah, you guys were still working together yeah. because I had gotten over it. That would be the only person that it might be awkward if I had run into in the past. Now it's like so far behind right. me that I would just say like, hi, how are you? But back then it's like <laughs> <laughs> that would be my fear of running into a toxic ex. Yeah. But- and isn't this literally the exact same situation Lizzie was working with somebody that Ryland didn't like who Ryland basically thought was like a toxic individual and that he had been dropped by several other friends (coughs) Jeffree Star (coughs) like it is literally the exact same situation she chose the friendship with the guy who she was writing with or working with over the long lasting friendship that she had had with Ryland Ryland had to cut her off and they didn't speak for years and I think it goes to show that Ryland is just like such a fake individual like I've always felt like he was fake but now I'm like I'm a hundred percent sure he's fake because I'm like you couldn't even look back into your own life being in this exact same situation and actually like it was such a big part of your life that you and Lizzie had to talk about it at some point on your podcast so for you to have been through the exact same thing with a toxic friend who was extremely toxic and the other people had left because of their toxic behavior and you still you still want to have your cake and eat it too you guys are trash honestly I'm just gonna say you guys are fucking trash same bad friend behavior that Lizzie exhibited to you is exactly what you and Shane are doing to Trisha and it sucks because Dusty Daily sent me a clip that he had been sent by a subscriber of his and basically the clip is Ryland as well as Jeffree Star laughing over people who don't buy houses. So I actually think that these are actual jokes that Jeffree Star was making in the presence of Shane and Ryland for him to feel so comfortable making that very inside joke around you. Take a look. Um, But monthly, yeah, it's expensive. <laughs> but my mortgage is really low. Unlike a lot of YouTubers I actually put, you know, a I actually paid for my house. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Unlike a lot of YouTubers I actually put, you know, I actually paid chunk. for my house. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Unlike a lot of YouTubers I actually put, you know, I actually chunk. paid for my house. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> actually paid for my house. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> paid chunk. for my house. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, what is so funny? What is actually that funny, Ryland? Most of America has to rent their house. I'm sure you would be renting if you weren't shacked up with Shane Dawson. So what is so funny? (laughs) What is so goddamn funny? Seems to me like you understood that joke on a much deeper level, if you know what I mean. And you know what's the really funny part to me is that I was having a conversation about this with my mother, right? My mum, I always like bounce my video ideas and all that kind of stuff off my mother. And I was having a conversation with my mother about this today. And basically I was saying like, will they ever be able to recover because at this point in time Jeffree Star can't even rely on Ryland and Shane to do the cleanup job that they are so good at doing in the past like because they have got literally no reputation now and not even Ryland can try and you know come out as this squeaky clean character at this point they are of literally no use to Jeffree Star they they aren't because the conspiracy palette isn't selling as much as it used to people who are Shane Dawson supporters are now looking at him with the side eye and especially for his affiliation with Jeffree Star. So is the money really going to be coming in from the merchandise and from the conspiracy palettes? Because I really don't think it will because honestly, and this is just me being blatantly honest, you guys know what my review was of the Shane Dawson ex-Jeffree Star palette collection. 
I genuinely think that this was one of the worst palettes that Jeffree Star has ever put his name behind. And it's because the color story didn't make any sense. And people were all behind the hype and all behind everything. But not just that, the colors were like lackluster, in my personal opinion, lackluster and ashy. If you guys wanna see my review on the Shane Dawson conspiracy palette and stuff, I'll definitely leave that in the information tab just above as well. Honestly, it is so sad to see Shane Dawson and Trisha Paytas's relationship break down in such a huge, way and in such a massively public way it's sad to me that she can't rely on her friends to have her back when she has had their backs consistently and I think it just goes to show that regardless of how much they may love or care for her it really comes down to money because I cannot think that there is anything at this moment in time holding them to Jeffree Star as well as his affiliates other than financially anyway tell me what it is that you guys think about all of this crazy tea in the comment section down below are you still team trisha i know a lot of people have been like bouncing and flip-flopping on what team they're on or are you team nobody because everybody is trash just like me also what do you think about ryland do you think that ryland should have just kept his mouth shut or do you think it was important for ryland to share his part regardless of how it was received because ultimately shane's friend is ryland's friend too tell me what it is that you guys think in the comment section down below me personally i think that rylan should have taken some of his own advice on his podcast because on the first audio episode of the sit podcast this is what rylan had to say and i i swear by what oprah says is people will show you who they are listen yeah and it's a lesson i've had to learn the hard way because i used to ignore see red flags be like that's fine oh my and god and i really yeah. try my best now when somebody shows me who they truly are to take no and to now thank them for up. that information yeah. yeah and really like decide like okay this person can't be in my life or we need to set this boundary right up yeah. front I just truly wished that Ryland would have had the same respect for his friend's personal boundaries as he does for his own. Anyway, that is about it for me. If you like this video, give this video a thumbs up. If you like it, if you don't, I don't give a shit anyway. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification with the bell so that you guys get a notification every single time the Petty Page posts new content. Also, please do not forget that I have a website where I sell my makeup wares. It's www.dramaticboutique.com. There you can find my brand new palette no more nudes as well as lip glosses and eyelashes and all of that good stuff we'll also be updating the inventory very very soon so keep your eyes open for that thank you guys so much for listening to today's video and until next time you badass petty bitches it's been Paige bye these bitches is petty